Guys, welcome. So today, well, in fact, this video is going to ask the question. Now, I have done tours of Europe before. I've done them from the northwest of England. I've been over to Switzerland, Germany, France, Belgium, Holland, all that stuff. But I've always gone by bike. The next few days are just to see which is best. Is it worth going on a bit of a tour, taking the bikes like this and getting them out when we get there? Or... Do we ride the two bikes? It's a bit of a faff to get in, but we seem to be getting better at it. It's freezing. It's really early in the morning. We're gonna get the bikes out now. We're gonna go and do some local lanes. So join me for that. We'll see how we get on. And then I'll let you know when we get back if it's a success. Is this the way forward as far as bike touring goes? It's cold though. Heated gloves will be worn today. Let's get dirty. Oh, now is it not going up? Oh shit, the bed. I was just going to say, is it not going up there? But that looks absolutely horrendous. How the hell is my bike going to get up here? This is steep. Stand up for this, I think. Oh my. How, how on earth did my bike get up that? That was like steeper than any set of stairs I've ever been on. Thank you. And to save anybody asking later on, my Vosges is still sporting its tyres that it came on. The cheap and nasty ones that aren't brilliant. So it's coping all right at the minute though. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, that's the key for riding around here. If you do go past any pedestrians that move out of the way for you, any horses, just give them the respect they deserve. Don't go tear arsing past them. Horses, turn your bikes off, let the horses get past you. Just be nice. Because the more people that come here and be dicks, quite frankly, the more likely these roads will just be cut off for us and you'll not be able to use them anymore. have a little sit down here. No I can't. Cheers. No. Straight through a puddle probably just so it goes too. That's the good things with the roads around here. You do a little dirt section like that and then it comes to a road section that's concrete so you kind of get your little rest in. You're not stood up constantly. Which is good for somebody who's unfit and new, really, to all this off-road and stuff. It's a nice rest. I do find as well, when I'm riding around places like this and I'm concentrating, especially when I'm stood up, you miss all of the views because all you're trying to do is not go flat on your face on the bumpy sections, but you look around and round here it's just absolutely gorgeous but I'm just concentrating not taking it in the sights until you get to these tarmac bits where you can actually have a look round forever changing weather condition but in true my video styles it's always pigging raining I know that includes going to bloody south of France. We're the only people ever to find rain in south of France. You just don't know what, what's at the top of each brow though, do you? You like get near to the top and they're oh, we're all right. There's so many loose sheep. They sneak up on you, especially when it's lambing time as it is here. There's all the little tiny ones out and about. 
Now, just asking Dave on the intercom now a serious question, but Dave, have you ever seen sunshine in Yorkshire? Have you? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm calling bullshit on that because I've never seen it, me. Uh, rare as rocking all shit, I would say. It's as soon as I get motorcycle keys in my hands, the clouds go, hey, look, he's got them. He's got keys in his hand, boys, let's start raining. And the weather app did say 30% chance of rain. Now, 30% chance of rain when you're on a motorbike means 100% chance of rain. Proper farm tracks around here. You cannot ride a bike dodging sheep shit, horse shit, cow shit. There's just... It's just full of shit. And it smells like it as well. Oh, another downhill section here. Oh, and it's quite slippy as well. Loose sheep. I don't know about you Dave, but I thought that bloke was trying to uh, have his way with those sheep. He, he was, uh, he looked very embarrassed, very embarrassed, <laughs> a bit sheepish. He looked very embarrassed when we come round that corner then, like, like we'd caught him with his pants down. Yeah, he was definitely having his way with those sheep when we got there then. A quick pan around. How nice is that? Oh, lovely. I have no fuel gauge. That's yeah. It's one of the joys of the Vosges, isn't it? You you kind of have no fuel. Well, you've got fuel, and then it's no fuel. Quick, get some. I've not had the camera on for a bit because we're doing a road section but then we come across this and I'm thinking if I'm going to go on my arse I've got to record it because if I at least record it I'll have something funny oh god wish me luck is it slippy? Uh, we're alright oh that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be Okay, so we are at the start of our next off-road section. We're at Bransdale Moor. Yes, I'm told this is a very long one, so we'll be on here for a while. But I can already see another motorbike terracing down the road. I'm sure I've just seen it pull a wheelie as well. Right, let's go and join them on the way up then. It's called Rudland Rig. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Trying to like bounce it, you know, when you get to these sections to try and get some air. It's not working for me. I suppose it's difficult when you're going uphill, isn't it, to get anything. get some air time here surely hey. <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh Jesus God it's that weird it's like they've just gone right we've run out of sun now boys you get the stones out Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god it come right up the pig in middle look at the state of the tank you can tell how much was in that it is like my tank is just soaked with water because it just seemed to come right up oh that's funny it's come right up the inside of my helmet oh, what a clown i am for going on that i've just sat down a bit for a rest whoa oh geez ah, it's awesome blakely ridge public bridleway oh, okay you can walk over open blah de blah de blah loads of rare birds watch you don't hit any keep calling those tires but i'm i'm actually liking you know when you lose a little bit of grip and it, it slides a bit for me that that is awesome for making you kind of go yes i'll slow down a bit you know until because i'm like fairly new to it it's yeah it's it's a good leveler to say yes pack it in you're not good enough to go any faster yeah. but the Vosges is so far is doing exceptionally well i cannot complain and even with this rucksack on the bag it's just going yeah, it's just getting dirty. It's going to need a good old wash by the end of this. Now's the hard bit. Now, I will say, for anybody who's short, the Vosges is a tall bike anyway. But trying to get on the bike when you've got this on means you can't get on it the usual way of throwing your leg over. You can't do it. So you've got to kind of pretend that you're Jean-Claude Van Damme in Kickboxer. You've got to get your leg up and high and over it's quite difficult to do but i can get my leg over who who were uh, ready when you are more of the stony stuff let's try and get a jump here oh so close this one maybe oh. this one definitely got some off the floor then I find myself swerving a lot more than normal when I'm riding off-road because a lot of the time you'll get round a little bend like that and you'll hit a little dip and you instantly just go ah oh, shit <laughs> oh it does just keep going doesn't it I keep thinking we'll get to the end of it yeah, it's a fair old distance that, especially for an unfit fat man who is struggling to keep on my feet. <laughs> You'd think it'd be easy just stood up on a bike. And if you've never done off-roading or you did it as a kid when you were much, much fitter, try it again now when you're older. It's amazing. So much fun. Oh, check that view out. Wow, I didn't realise we were so high up. Oh. Oh. And I want to kind of take in the view, but I also don't want to end up on my face. <laughs> so I keep doing the occasional look to, you, to the left and then quickly looking back in horror because there's like a big drop in front of me. Yeah, I was trying my best not to hit a pedestrian then. But you missed that view. That is amazing. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is like going downstairs, isn't it? This is where jeans is not a good choice for off-roading. I've got to say, my fitness is taking about a bit of a pounding. My back is aching, my legs are the like bloody jelly at the minute because we've been we've been riding all day. It's been awesome, but it's hard work. The Vosges is getting dirtier and dirtier.
Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Dave, very luckily, didn't have the same fate as me, but went through one puddle and the water, like, flew up from here. So it went all over the tank, all over the front of me and all up my helmet. So it probably got me quite quite funny, made me giggle. We are still in the middle of bloody nowhere. There is absolutely nothing around. There's a road I've seen probably, I don't know, two or three cars and a motorbike come past while we've been here. I promise not to video you having a piss. It's not that kind of channel, boys and girls. Get your minds out of the gutter. It's been a really good day so far. We've been fortunate. We're on these bikes. These bikes are really fuel efficient, like to a point of, we've been riding around best part of four or five hours. Thought we'd top up £4.50 to top up. So we know they're good for miles and miles and miles now. But when you're in the middle of nowhere, the garages are not open like regular hours. Like they're not open like in busy places where they're open 24 hours or they're just card reader ones. They're like attached to shops and stuff. And you're lucky if you get to one that's got fuel or if it's open. So you've got to be prepared for that. But also, there's no pig in shops or anything when you're miles from anywhere. So you need to have something with you. And in my case, a little bit of chocolate. Mm. Well needed. I need the energy. Seems if you go behind that bush for a piss, it's a dump spot as well as a piss spot. A dump spot? Yeah. A chip? Yeah. Really? Yes, yeah. That is minging. Rubbish. Don't be that person that just drops it on the floor. Take it with you, put it in your pocket, put it in the bin when you find one. And look, in the middle of nowhere, there's still a police van, so watch your speeding. And that's you, Dave, I'm talking to. Oh. Right, I'm gonna get back on the bikes and get riding again. Now this is what happens when you make it to, where are we? Whitby. Whitby. We've made it to Whitby. And when you make it to Whitby, you have to have fish and chips. Fish and chips is the rule. I've gone for the classic fish, chips, mushy peas. That animal over there, fish, chips and curry. Can't be done. <laughs> what we decided to do was we didn't camp. We decided to come back to the first. So we decided to come back to the Tannehill Inn and uh, yeah, the ride back here was a bit grim. As soon as we got up into the hills, it was very, very misty. And it's even colder than this morning. I didn't even think that was possible, but the bikes are back in. We've had an awesome day. Oh, what I've learned really over the last two nights is when you go touring, I love the whole experience, leaving the house on the bike, getting on the ferry, all that stuff. I'm a big fan of it. However, I think it depends on the bike you've got because on a touring bike, you've got comfort. You can go on the motorway for hours and hours and hours and they're comfortable to ride on the motorway. These bikes that we've got, they're all right on the motorway. Cruising at 60 mile an hour is fine, but anything more than that, especially on the Vosges, it, the vibrations come and after hours of that, it makes it a bit uncomfortable. If I was to do a tour, in particular doing the green lane in tours, the trails, I think I would have to say that vanning them up and getting to location in the van is gonna be the best stop. You don't have to put all the motorway miles on, which is just loads better. I'll very quickly just show you the setup inside. Comfort for two, it's all right actually. It's just gonna be a cold night, so I'm not looking forward to the night if I'm totally honest because it's cold. I'm gonna be going in there for a beer. It's actually shockingly expensive in here, but it's. Uh, it's a nice little place. You alright? Hi! 
Have I just ruined your video? You have, it's all your fault. I know, <laughs> I do what I Oh, I don't know. It might trend then. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would. Be, be a TikTok sensation. It'd be. Oh, it's so lucky I didn't get you with your pants down. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just taking boots out. I'm going to let them down because I wouldn't put those out. The, I'm letting far too little, much heat out. Yeah, there's a little bolt. Now, that is not something <laughs> that happens every day, I've got to say. You missed that. What was that? So, I'm filming walking around the van. Next door's van, they open and jump out. And she goes, Oh, that would have been bad if I'd have just jumped out and weed on the floor while you were filming, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it would. It would be. <laughs> However, it would be a brilliant one for ratings. So yeah. you know. Although you came in the van filming just as I was about to drop the trousers. Again. Yeah. yeah. It's a ratings. No, no, it's it's, it's a just, ratings winner. It's a ratings winner. It's in fact, I'm going to shut the door next time. Pants around yeah. the ankles, please, when I yeah. walk in. It's a ratings winner. Anyway, this is the setup in here. Big chair, which is awesome because it would like the passenger seat swivels round and it faces the big chair, so it kind of gives you like a bit of a single bed setup. I slept all right there last night, however, it was very, very cold. And then you've got the luxury accommodation <laughs> up here, but it, in all honesty, it's an awesome like double bed up there, so there is loads of room there. Fridge, beer fridge. There's a emergency beers are in there. There's a, a heater pumping warm air in. Yeah. That will be needed tonight because it's pig in freezing. It's still under construction, yeah. this van. It's, it's, it's a part done project as usual. Yes, but it's a trial. It's a trial. Yeah, yeah. We're trying it's the bikes out. Job, seeing, yeah. and it's doing job and it's and current it state. It works. I just need to remember to put the sleeping bag out. Because last night I didn't. You couldn't be asked I thought, to get out, can't be asked getting sleeping bag out. I'm comfortable. And I was when I got into bed at like, I don't know, what time was it? About one ish? About half twelve, one half twelve. Something like that. It was fine then. A couple of hours later, woke up feeling like I was like freezing. And then I was still too lazy to get sleeping bag out. So I just suffered all night. <laughs> but I'm not doing it tonight, sleeping yeah. bag. It's a success as far as the. Trial goes with the bikes and definitely... Carrying all the camping kit that we didn't use. Yes, all the camping kit that we didn't use was definitely worth carrying and giving us bad backs for because we've got to <laughs> lean forward because of our backpacks. But at least we know what to take, what not to take and what works and what doesn't. So and what it's like with the weight on off-road. Yes. Mm, and I, I didn't really notice because when yeah. you stood up, you don't feel it, do you? No, it was so it was a success for that. Um, and that's, I would say, a success for the van because you're not having to do shed loads of motorway journeys mm, motorway or miles. motorway miles. You're not doing them because you're doing them in comfort in the van. So if it does rain on you, you're nice and warm you're in the van. You're not scrubbing a set of tyres before you get there as well. And that, yeah, especially that because, like, set of nobblies. Like, I'm all right in the Vosges. I keep calling them cheap tyres. I'm being dead unfair, but the tyres on them are rock solid. They are from road juice more than off-road juice. So I could probably do thousands of miles on them without needing new ones. But you get some knobblies on, you're going to destroy them on the motorway. Or you're going you're gonna to give them a good kick in anyway. Anyway, we're going. We're going getting beer. Some beer. Yes, yeah. the important stuff. The next day. It's all gone horribly wrong. So, <laughs> this morning, we've got up, it's time to head back home, so the idea was, leave the bikes in the van, me and Dave go, we're going separate ways, he's going to Leeds, I'm going towards Manchester, so, we're going to do a bit of driving, pull over, I'm going to get the bike out, and I'll ride rest of the way home, but, we've got, uh, ready to go, Started the van up, won't go into gear, gearbox is gone. <laughs> Dave's phoned the RAC and the RAC have said, yes, we can come and get your van in three to five working days. It does mean that we're going nowhere in the van. So this is the downside 
of touring with the bikes in the van you're relying on the reliability of the van as well which based on this today uh yeah makes you realize what can happen now luckily it's happened a couple of hours from home so a couple of hours from home's not too bad it's a little ride but could have been in the middle of spain or in the middle of france so we're lucky this has happened local i'm going to get my bike here on dave's doing the same and we're just going to have to bike home and someone's going to come and collect his van in a few days the downside of touring with your van it puts fresh doubt there it's still a good way to do it we've just been really unfortunate i suppose just a bit of a trial run that's gone wrong at the end i don't know why my voice went high pitched again but it did but yeah it's freezing and my biking gear is wet from yesterday but yeah time to suit up and ride home tell us what's happened dave slight issue with the van <laughs> uh, shake down shook it down basically <laughs> shake it down the van this morning but it started fine but i put it in reverse and it's stuck in reverse so stay out move it so basically i'm gonna have to wait for a recovery truck to come and pick the van up I'm currently standing in an empty space so that I can make, uh, hopefully, uh, reverse the van out onto a recovery truck or hopefully can drag it out onto a truck, take it home and then no doubt that'll be an expensive repair. So hopefully not, hopefully. One of the downsides of using a van to carry the bikes, you could break the van and yeah. the bikes. They said they were going to be here in 45 minutes, that's got to be half an hour ago. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to say goodbye to the van, bye yeah, to Dave. Yes, drop me a message. Yeah. I'll I'll see it pop up on the old carp you ride right, on the way okay. back, mate. Keep me posted. Yeah, right, I'm going mate. to go and start the yeah. slog home. I hope I don't get piss wet through, <laughs> which is going to happen. It could well happen. It's 100% going to happen. You, yeah, no, I can. You can see it already. I'll get round the corner and it's going to start raining on me. And um, the state. The absolute state on the Vosges as well. Properly used yesterday. Such a shame. And it's it's such a shame for me as well. After a big day riding yesterday, I really wanted like just a chill out in the van today. Comfy seats and knock about 50 miles off my journey. But it's not to be it happens as they say and do you know what there are worse places to jump on the bike because if you look around here there is absolutely nothing around but it is absolutely beautiful for riding and everybody must think so because there must have been 50 bikes there this morning turning up for a brew or just turning up for a leg stretch but it's in the middle of like this well basically nothing I can see why it's popular for bikers around here as well originally told by the RAC it was going to be three to five working days for them to come and pick Dave's van up luckily they picked one of the contractors to pick it up who phoned Dave up and said we've got a driver in the area that can collect you uh, it'll be 45 minutes 45 minutes yeah there's some things I'm not prepared to wait for and a car doing 15 mile an hour because it's a hill is not one of those things one thing that I really don't like about the GoPro recording stuff and it is that you, you get no like depth perception with it. it because the technology on this camera is so good the stability control and all of those things make it an amazing camera for doing motorcycle riding or any sort of adventure sport but it also means that you see absolutely no hills everything looks like a straight road everything and it's like now i'm going downhill it, it's a steep hill i wouldn't want to ride this on a push bike type of steep hill 
but you don't see it and down the road in front of us you might see little gaps but I can assure you it's going down <laughs> up like now we are going downhill the GoPro won't show it oh hello little excitable lamb oh bless oh it's giving it some all the rest of run in the field and that thing has just decided to go down the road come on see the gate go in the gate there you go gonna have to do probably about 70 80 miles from Cumbria down the M6 heading back towards Cheshire so it is uh, it's a fur trekker motorway which isn't ideal and it's not really what I plan to do. It was nice meeting up with Dave again. It was nice spending a few days with him and uh, having a, a laugh and a joke. I'm going to get some fueling. And uh, yeah, I'll jump on the motorway. So you don't want to see that stuff. I don't want to see that stuff. Long motorway journey home. Well, I say long. On this bike, I would bet maybe an hour and a half maybe an hour and a half to two hours or something like that oh. number four please thank you oh. <clears throat> right leave me with it i'll go and battle this motorway on my own i'll catch you guys on the next one laters okay this is what's gone wrong with my van this piece of shit plastic thing here has broken off that pin and that's something to do with the gearbox selector so I've literally pushed that on and I can now change gears and I reckon I could just wrap two tie wraps around that hold it on temporarily and I could have done that back up at Tan Hill because I think I've got a couple of tie wraps in with the spare bodging bits and pieces for the motorcycle so I didn't need any tools, I had the torch with me and I've found that now I've come home on the back of a recovery truck Champion!